What's up, it's George the Fragrance Apprentice, and welcome to the advanced list. If you haven't seen the beginner or intermediate list, I would heavily advise that you do. Those lists are there for a reason, and they are for, for people who are either getting into fragrance, they've got into fragrance, and they want to go a little bit further. This list is the absolute craziest fragrances that I own. They're the wildest. They are some of the most expensive fragrances that I own. They are for people who are really, really into this, people who are very enthused, people who are not afraid to wear some pretty risky shit, if I can be very brutally honest with you. Most of these will not get you compliments. In fact, most of them will get you complaints. They might lose you some friends. But who needs friends when you have fragrances? Uh, That's why I keep telling myself anyway. So... As the previous two videos, we are going to go from 1 to 10, 1 being the lightest of this list, all the way to 10, which is the strongest, most outrageous, most craziest, most out there, insane, bombastic, wild fragrance in my entire collection. You are going to want to stick around for that reveal. Let's start with number one, the lightest of the advanced list. One is from the house of Tom Ford, it's Tobacco Vanille. Yes, we're starting with the lightest being Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. When I smell this, I think of going to Estonia, of course, very recently. I think of meeting a ridiculously uh, wonderful lady from uh, Finland. And so this has got some very captivating memories for me. But it is effectively Christmas in a bottle. It has the spices, it has the vanilla, it has that beautiful herby tobacco that all encapsulates a sort of a Christmas wonderland of a fragrance. I have a full review that I shot on location in the Estonia Christmas markets and I would highly recommend that you go and watch that to find out my full thoughts on this. Number two is from the house of Nasamato. It is Duro. Yes, again, something that could even be potentially higher on the list if it wasn't for the other insanity that I'm bringing to the table. This is a very, very uh, hard, harsh, woody, yet sickly fragrance. It's very, very bizarre. Very, very interesting. Duro, of course, is Italian for hard. Um, and it is just very, something very special, very whimsical, uh, very poignant in a way. Some people say that this smells like a, a bad boy. It smells like somebody who's, um, you know, against the law or, or whatever it might be. I don't actually get that anymore. I actually get a very somber personality from this fragrance. I actually get something that is actually maybe a little bit depressing, a little bit uh, melancholy. But I love it anyway. It's very, very emotionally charged. And it's just something that uh, has always had a reputation and for good reason. Number three is from the house of Gucci. Now, if you told me even a few months ago that a Gucci fragrance would be making it on not just even the intermediate or beginner, but the advanced list, I would have said, what on earth are you on about? This is, of course, Gucci Guilty Absolute. What a fragrance. What a risk. As I said previously, in unhyped fragrances, this smells so medicinal. It smells like a hospital. It smells like a bandage. It just smells medical. It's very, very entertaining, (laughs) even though it does smell like that. But it it really goes for it, and it doesn't hold back with that medicinal nature. It's like, look, I'm going to smell like a used bandage, and I'm going to go in there, and there's going to be no apologies. And that is fantastic. You've got to smell this just for the sheer balls of it, just for the sheer courage and bravery that went into making this fragrance. It is something very special, something very wild. So glad to own it. I don't wear it that much for obvious reasons, but I'm very happy to have it. Number four is from the house of Gallagher Fragrances. It is wicked good. Why is this an advanced fragrance? Because when you spray this on, it honestly smells as though you've just taken a load of chocolate cocoa powder and just put it on yourself. It is so, again, unapologetic about what it's trying to do. It's trying to make you smell like a very beautiful, very lovely marshmallow hot chocolate. And it's not going halves in it. It's not cutting any corners. It will make you smell like a marshmallow hot chocolate, whether you like it or not, as long as you spray it on, of course. A beautiful, beautiful uh, cocoa bean just striking you uh, in the chest, just envelops out with some vanilla, 
and it, I don't know how he's done it, but it actually smells very genuinely like clotted cream. I don't know how he's done that, but it's really, really quite incredible and quite uh, interesting feat. As you can see here, we're not just talking about fragrances that are going to smell nice and get compliments. We're talking about fragrances that are trying to create a sort of an artistic uh, statement on what you should smell like. Number five, we've gone from chocolate, we're gonna go to coffee. Espresso Royale. It will make you smell like a used cafetiere. Brilliant. It just is one of the most genuine, genuine, authentic coffee notes ever. It is loved and equally hated. I love this, I, I adore it, I think it's absolutely amazing, but there are some people who I've sprayed this on and they've just gone, you're not wearing that, we're not going out with you wearing that. Put like, get a shower, put Versace Eros on. But again, most of these fragrances incredibly unapologetic. It will just make you smell like coffee and that's the deal. And it's your decision whether you want to take that deal or not. I cannot stress to you the amount of painstaking effort that it must have taken to create one of, if not the most authentic coffee bean note in the whole of fragrance. And I've smelled so many fragrances that are supposed to smell like coffee this one really takes the cake to the point where it's too much you understand my favorite coffee fragrance of all time is sm cafe because it takes the best elements of coffee and then reworks it with other notes but that is coffee for coffee's sake espresso royale right number six is from the house of mask milano it is tango or as i like to call it tango unchained this is a very very classic old school, old school fougere fragrance to the absolute death depths. It's like, I don't know, a fougere, but you've put it in a pan and you've caramelized it for about 10 minutes. It's really wild, really, really sickly, really syrupy. It smells old. And for some people, they will not like that. I, I'm kind of into that. That's cool. Everybody knows that I love older women, right? But this is, um, you can even see how dark the juice is this smells old this smells almost actually a little bit too old it's going towards you know the retirement uh, <laughs> it smells like the most poshest most pristine most well looked after retirement home you could ever want to visit that is Mass Milano's Tango number seven is uh, this is Zerjoff's 400 of course you've heard me talk about this a tremendous amount incredible incredible just incredible I can't even begin. Just jasmine. An incredible, beautiful jasmine and patchouli combo. Just take the, the best elements of those headier, deeper, woodier florals. You put it into this. You add some citrus, a little bit of orange. You add some vanilla. Very classical. Very beautiful. I love my incense sticks, as you know. Uh, you might have seen them being burnt behind me sometimes. This is just magnificent. The only problem with this is it's a Selfridges exclusive and it is out of stock at the moment. But wow, what a absolute trip. It does smell like I used to go to film school and there was a, a, a girl that I, uh, was a good friend of mine and she was called Lily and you'd go into uh, her bedroom and there'd just be like incense, like the remnants of incense sticks and the remnants of like she was a really big hippie and you know she'd have all of these kind of like sticks and triangles that have been burnt and this kind of smells a little bit like all of that meshed into one it's incredible and for me as somebody who is a bit of a hippie and is really into all of those kinds of smells and all of that uh, kind of thing i think it's absolutely bloody brilliant this what this next one here is of course Bahik, Rainier's Bahik. How could it not be? You know, I love this fragrance so much. This was a fragrance that really, really got to me. It really inspired me to uh, go and do the uh, the Halloween special that we did. But it does, it smells like beaut like incredible, beautiful, sweetened soil. Um, in fact, it smells very reminiscent. There's been a lot of floods here. Um, you've got a field right there and it's completely wet and there's wet mud. And as it dries out and it gets drier and drier with the sunlight, it gives off this sort of soily, muddy, dry, dried, soily, muddy um, smell with a bit of greenery. And that is Bahik. It is the earth. This fragrance is a celebration of the earth itself in all of its damning ways and all of its unforgiving ways. That is how I interpreted it. It is confidence. It is just a celebration of power and confidence and 
all of those good things and you can of course see my full thoughts of it there's a review down below but this is such an advanced piece of work it really is trying to capture the essence of something creatively in a sense incredible number two is a city on fire wow what an absolutely phenomenal fragrance it smells like the moment where you strike a, la a, a match. You know, when you strike a match and you've got the wood, you've got the tinder, you've got the flame, you've got the burning, all of that. If you were to freeze time for that one moment and stretch it out into like 20 hours of that being a smell, that would be a city on fire. So dramatic, so brilliant. And as it dries down, what's really weird about it, as you get the cedar wood, as you get the dark berries and the, the labdanum especially, and it gives off a bit of sweetness, it can actually garner compliments and it can actually do very well and people really enjoy it, including myself, so very unusual. But what is my most advanced fragrance? What's a fragrance that I've been absolutely loving and I, I am almost humbled by as a fragrance collector in which I'm like, wow, this is incredible, this is totally next level, this is shifting it up a gear, this is absolutely unbridled passion for the subject matter, for fragrance and for the, the object that it is trying to represent a fragrance about. It's from the House of Zoologists, it is Tyrannosaurus Rex. Victor Wong, an eccentric, mad genius, and I really mean that, he's a genius, real genius, and, and just the fragrances that he comes out with, the ideas that he comes out with, just absolutely humbling and brilliant and innovative, and nobody is doing anything like what he's doing at the moment. And um, as a fellow uh, creator who tries to push the boundaries with things, who tries to come up with innovative ideas uh, for this uh, fragrance YouTube sphere, I have nothing but respect for him. This is an incredible fragrance. It smells like... Well, it smells like fire and brimstone, if I can be brutally honest about it, with a little pinch of blood. Like, there's this iron element, this metallic iron element, which smells like a little, little bit like blood. But there's, um, there's again, like a, a, an incense kind of vibe going on. There's just so much. And if you put this on, this will last an entire week on you. Do not go, like, two or three or four sprays. Don't. Just go one spray, tap, tap, because that is that will get you probably the whole entire day. It's such a strong fragrance. It's the strongest fragrance that I own. It's absolutely remarkable and unbelievable. I'm completely in love with this fragrance. Really, really so much. It has inspired me uh, in a huge way to the point where I've got one of my really quite wild and crazy fragrance reviews that I do. Um, I've got one about this coming out incredibly soon. So that's it. That is, you are now initiated. Those are the advanced fragrances in my collection. They aren't all the advanced fragrances in the world, but those are some of my most prized possessions. And I hope that you got the information that you wanted out of this video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content and you want to see the very special review that I'm going to be doing of Tyrannosaurus Rex very soon, please hit subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll see all of my um, upcoming uploads. Anyway, I'm the Fragrance Sprays. Thank you for watching. I'm out.